This is the National Center for Korean Traditional Performing Arts in Seoul. The audience is listening to a performance by the National Orchestra of Mongolia that captures the dynamic nature of the nomads. At play is a traditional Mongolian instrument that looks similar to the Korean kayagum. The audience seems to be enjoying the performance. That is probably because of the similarities between the music of these two cultures. 맨처음 들었을 때는 되게 낯설을 거라고 생각했는데 그래도 같은 그 우리가 몽 같은 몽골 민족이라서 그런지 몰라도 굉장히 친근감 있고요. 아주 색다른 경험이어서 되게 좋았어요. 가야금하고 너무 비슷해서 유심히 봤었는데 물론 그, 그 줄에 연결하고 맨 끝에 그 매도까지도 그 이렇게 줄로 되어 있는 것이 똑같이처럼 생겼더라고요. 그래서 아 이게 아무래도 무슨 어떤 역사적인 연관성이 있지 않을까 그런 생각이 들더라고요. The Korean kayagum has 12 strings. The Mongolian instrument has 13 strings. It still looks very similar to our kayagum. Upon closer examination, we discover a surprising fact. The place of manufacture usually written inside the instrument reads Pyongyang, written clearly in Korean. Let's take a closer look at the Mongolian yatak and find out its connection to the traditional Korean kayagum. Otto Gungtoya is a Mongolian yatak player. She has come to see Professor Lee Jae Suk of Seoul National University, who teaches Korean traditional music. Professor Lee Jae Suk is known as the best kayakum player in Korea. Otto Gungtoya is taking out her yatak. She wants to check how similar the kayakum and the yatak are. Let's see if the playing of the yatak is the same as the playing of the kayagum. Otto Gungtoya is showing Lee Jae Suk how she plays the yatak. Otto Gungtoya is a skilled player and yatak teacher. There are three kinds of kayagum instruments in Korea. The oldest kind is the Cheonga kayagum. The strings are far apart and the music is very slow. The Sanjo Kayagum was made by improving the Cheonga Kayagum. The strings were brought closer together so that the hands were able to move faster and more sounds could be expressed. The Mongolian Yatak is shaped exactly like a Sanjo Kayagum. So, we have a lot of people who are in the world. 
이것이 왜 가능하냐 하면 주리 명주실이기 때문에 신축성이 있어서 그래서 결국은 그 농현의 맛인데 이것 가지고 희노애락을 다 표현할 수 있어서 어, 우리나라 가야금이 갖는 가장 장점이라고 그럴까 가장 그 사람의 신금을 울릴 수 있는 그 방법이 왼손 농선에 달려있다고 그렇게 생각하죠. 이 야탁스 테크닉 is the most similar to that of the modern kayagum. Strings were added so that new songs could be played, and there are no restrictions on the movement of the two hands. The Kayagum and the Yatak have many similarities. Otto Kung Toya is playing the Korean folk song Arirang without looking at the score. We were curious about how she knew the Arirang by heart. We visited the National Music and Dance School in Ulan Bator to find out more about this secret. It is a special school that teaches an elementary through high school curriculum. It is Mongolia's top art school and has received many domestic and international awards. This is a Yata class at the school. The teacher is teaching by performing a song. The song sounds very familiar. It is a Korean folk song. The teacher is putting a lot of effort into teaching the left hand nonghyun technique, which is a Korean kayagum technique. We became more intrigued about the relationship between the kayagum and the yatak. Тэгээд одоо анхны мэрэгчлийн одоо 16 ятгчдын нэг учраас солонгос багшийнхаа заасан тэр сургууль арал явж байгаа. Altang Tall's teacher was the North Korean kayakum player Kim Jong-am. We were able to find out some information about him at the school. Mana Kenzo Am Sharma, Minkson Zon Jarnigonos, Minkson Zon Jarendazon Vasil Jata, Mana Sorolin, Urik Mixin to Sichte, Hosin in Montasnik and Zorwe. Kim Jong Am came to the school in 1961 and taught Mongolian students for seven years. The Tedolin, the Golden Sin of the Tesson, who to me, what the Sorgatin digig Hungarian culture to Balus Roach, B. Balson, Humble Yarchok, Kinsan Baxilta. We were also able to find videos of Kim Jong Am in the Mongolian National Archives. In the Sotong Sosas, Mana Hutimitin Sorgot, Rutti Baxilta, Kim Jong Am, Baxin, Hotbotta, Baron Petrel. These videos were taken 40 years ago, and they show Kim Jong-am teaching his Mongolian students.
His students still remember the first time they met teacher Kim Jong-am. Хамгийн <laughs> А тэгэд хөгжим одоо эхний хэлчинд бол нэг 5 6 хайхан хөгжим ирсэн. Тэгээ ятах хөгжим гэдэг бол ерөөсө харахад одоо нэг юм банзан дээр ингээд утс ингээд татцсан юм шиг тийм ээ. Одоо эхлээд харахад бол хүн зэрэгсэн харахад бол тэрийг тийм их уян гэлэг тийм сайхан дуудаа эд шидтэй хөгжим гэж хүн баг хэлэхэргүй шиг үү. The students remember Kim Jong-am as a very passionate teacher. Within a year, he mastered the Mongolian language and was able to communicate freely with his students. The work records we found at the National Archives verified the fact that he was a great teacher. <laughs> This is the classroom where Kim jong am had his classes. He was always happy to see his students. Al Tang Tol has entered the classroom which contains memories of the seven years she spent with her teacher. She is missing him more than ever. He was always kind to his students and even invited students to his home. He let them try on traditional Korean clothes and taught them how to cook Korean dishes. Al Tang Tol is still holding on to the memories that her teacher left behind. The scorebook has become old and worn over the past 40 years. It contains all of the songs that Kim Jong-am taught his students. There are a few Korean folk songs in the book, including the Arirang.
We were curious about how Kim Jong Un ended up in Mongolia. This is the Mongolia National History Museum in which remains of Genghis Khan are kept. Mongolian traditional instruments are also on display, including a 19th century yatak. The yatak's frame is decorated with brilliant patterns, and its support is bent at the end. The Yatak first appears in Mongolian history books in the 13th century, right after the Mongolians put an end to their nomadic existence and established the Mongol Empire through conquest. The Yatak was also used in Buddhist music from the 16th century until the 19th century. This is the Gurdo Sutra. Buddhist music is recorded in it. A musical score for the Yatak was found in here. What's most interesting is that there is a picture of a Yatak which has an anjok, just like the Korean Kayagum. The Yatak faced a crisis in the early 20th century. The socialist government started a suppression campaign against Buddhism and traditional culture in 1921, and the Yatak was targeted as a result. <laughs> The Yatak was 